<laughs> well, we my, my, my. All right, let's shift gears in our story now, and off the scene, going off of the scene now, as we begin tonight, going off of the scene will be the Medes and the Persians, and the next empire that uh, Nebuchadnezzar saw were, would be the, the Greeks. And wouldn't you just love to be able to understand the last six or seven chapters of Daniel in every detail? Man, I would just love that. I think I really would give everything that I have if I could understand completely the last chapters in the book of Daniel. Uh, what a what a prediction. And we're going to run into that tonight in the, about the 45 minutes or so, a very specific prediction in Daniel. So in your notes now, here, here's where we're at. We've looked at all these people, places, things, and groups. We've looked at a, a, just a quick view of Old Testament history. Uh, we've seen the end of the Medo-Persian Empire. And, or, I'm sorry, the end of the Babylonian Empire, Daniel chapter 5. And we, we've come to the Medes and the Persians. We've met some of their kings and saw how they interacted with God's people. And the beginning with the returns uh, to the, 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 the promised land, the Holy Land. We've seen how some of these... Uh, uh, Persian kings allowed the Jews to come home. So now we start with tonight with the Grecian Empire, the Greek Empire. We're going to see that the Greeks destroyed the Persians and um, under Alexander the Great. And what a story we have to tell tonight. Oh my goodness. Now, the sheet that was passed out, let me explain something so that you don't think I've uh, completely lost my mind here in giving a mess like this out. These, these are part of my notes. And I realize that if we don't, if I don't get moving a little bit and keep you moving, we're not going to get through the material tomorrow. I've got to figure it figured out. We will get through it. But in order to do that, you don't need to be writing down some of this stuff. So to speed things up, I just gave you a copy of my raw notes. So what's typed is what I was going to have you write down. Well, now it's written down for you. That'll speed things up a little bit. The scribbling that I can't remove, I have to retype the thing, and we don't have time for that. Is, is, is my notes. So just hold on to this. We're going to get to it in just a little bit as we talk about a fascinating character. Everybody's heard his name. And uh, he looked a lot like Brad Pitt, I've heard. I don't know. <laughs> <clears throat> what an ugly guy. How did he ever make it? You know what I'm saying? All right, let's talk about the Greeks tonight. All right, let's talk about the beginning of the Greek Empire. If you'll write down the word myth, M-Y-T-H, the beginning of the Greek Empire is shrouded in mythology, and we don't know when it started, but one theory is that about the time of the judges in the Old Testament, about the 12th century B.C., uh, the Greek Empire uh, begins to come about. Now, this would be the period of the Trojan War and Homer and so forth. Now, the beginning of the authentic Greek history, if you'll write down 776, 776 B.C. is the first Olympiad. And most historians say that we can document that is the beginning of the great Greek Empire. Here's what's good about the Greek Empire. I've just got a laundry list. Here we go. Literature. Architecture. Democracy. Philosophy. And then I put in parentheses, careful. <laughs> and then I put this word in parentheses too, civilization. Well, that was... Those are some of the good things. Here's the bad. As the empire began to uh, erode cynicism. And a cynic, you've been around a cynic. Everything's... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> right this guy right here. See this? This is a prime example. Uh, uh, polytheism. That's a weakness. Polytheism. And I put then philosophy. It's on both lists. And we mentioned this a few minutes, well, an hour or two ago. The emphasis on the body and the gymnasium. Bad, bad, bad. With its attendant homosexuality. The breakdown of marriage. And cruelty towards children. And the Romans picked that up. Now, I want to give you a quote, and here's the quote. We're, we're, we're jumping ahead in the story just a little bit. The Romans conquered the Greeks, and the Greeks returned the favor. I want you to remember that. The Romans, we're going to see that later on this evening, possibly in the morning. The Romans will be the next big empire. Uh, well, the next big empire. We're going to have Alexander's general here. 
but Greek thought conquered the Romans. Well, why even mention that? This is the 21st century. We're from Indiana or Kentucky or Florida, Missouri, wherever you're from. This is the 21st century. What do we care about that? Because a lot of this foolishness and wickedness, the bad part of the Greek Empire, is still with us today. It's still with us today. And the whole idea of man is the measure of all things, and uh, the ideal uh, ideals for beauty, <coughs> and uh, some of this cynicism and, and that philosophy is still with us today. So if you'll mark that at 776, good, good, good. The Hellenistic states came into being between 776 and 500. And the wars with Persia lasted from 500 BC to 331 BC. Now let me say that again because this, this is important. <clears throat> the wars with Persia lasted from 500 BC to 331 BC and there are three main battlegrounds, Marathon, we mentioned that, Thermopylae, and Salamis. Now again, you can be an internet expert on this. You can look these words up, you got the whole story. So we can compress an awful lot of history into just a few hours by just giving you uh, these words and you, you can look it up. Now if somebody says to you, well, when did the empire, the Grecian empire really begin? We got these city-states, we've got, well, I get that. If you'll write down Philip of Macedon, and this is Alexander the Great's father, Philip of Macedon, uh, 359 to 336. He brought together all of these city-states under a single ruler. Now, he was not a Greek. Strictly speaking, he was a Macedonian, and he wanted to lead this united Grecian empire against Persia, but he didn't get the chance because his wife, supposedly, we don't, he died suddenly. <laughs> Let's put it that way. And they didn't get along. Well, the neighbor was, it was the talk of the neighborhood. It was terrible. The theory is that she poisoned him. But not before he had trained his young son, Alexander, to carry out his ambition. So all we've done so far is look back in the myth a little bit. And here's Macedon and Greece and here we have all these little city-states united under Philip of Macedon, king of Macedonia. He brought all these together, and then he died. So now, this brings us to one of the most fascinating people in history, and he's mentioned in your Bible, not by name. He's in there. And this is Alexander the Great. If you'll put down the dates of 336 to 323, 336 to 323 B.C., those are the dates of his conquests. At age 13, at age 13, in 343, his father put him with a tutor. You know what the tutor's name was? Aristotle. That's right, the Aristotle. And just as a sidebar, Alexander, on all of his travels around the Mediterranean, all of his conquests, sent back um, natural uh, specimens, animals and plants, back to Aristotle, who was very interested in all this stuff. So could you imagine saying, well, Aristotle was my tutor. When he was 16 years old, his dad made him regent of Greece, and when he was 20, Alexander took control of the Greek army. Now, so here's, here's a 20-year-old youngster. The treasury's in debt. Greece slash Macedon is surrounded by their enemies, and he's 20 years old. 20 years old. But in 343, with 35,000 soldiers, he crossed the Hellespont River, and he started on his conquest of the Persian army. Now, you remember that slide I put up, the size of the Persian kingdom? And here's a 20-year-old kid. And uh, as my father-in-law used to put it when he'd lecture on this, he said, his treasury is about bankrupt, and he's surrounded by his enemies, but this guy just didn't know the meaning of the word quit. Well, he defeated the Persians at the Granicus River. That's a big battle in Asia Minor. And then at Gordium, he goes into the Temple of Zeus. And there's a big knot in the temple. It's called the what? Yeah, the Gordian knot. And the theory is that whoever can untie that knot will rule the world. Remember what Alexander did? He took his sword out. Just cut it in two. Now, the scene that's in my mind when I hear that is Raiders of the Lost Ark. Remember the guy with the sword? And here's the sword goes, boom! <laughs> <laughs> Real take the easy 
And Alexander the Great stood in front of the Gordian knot and just cut it in two. So he defeated the Persians at the Grand Acres River. Next, he defeated the Persians at Isis, northeast corner of the Mediterranean Sea. Now listen to these numbers. At the Battle of <coughs> Isis, the conquered Persians numbered 600,000. And how many were in Alexander's army? 35,000. Let that soak in. And on this occasion, this is where he uh, conquered the wife and children of Darius III. Darius III escaped to raise another army. But here's what I want you to know.